What? Oh, you guys, you shouldn't have. 15, you need it to calm down. You listen. Yo, 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 G, I'm hit with the kids and I'm here to talk about Young Justice. That actually rhymed, I can't believe it. A show that during my early teenhood I was absolutely obsessed with, next to Mass Effect 3 and Justice League Unlimited. What makes the show awesome is simply three things. One, it's got complex, hilarious, and quotable characters who are not just casually realistic in their behaviour, but they grow very realistically, so who they are by the end of the season is completely different to who they were at the start. Number two, a complex and well thought out world that's organised with a political logic that melds all the differing genres of magic, sci-fi, and urban crime into a believable logic. General Wade Ealing, U.S. Air Force, Aqualad. Justice League. This expands to the designs. I love how all the outfits are relevant to the expertise of the characters. Batman clearly wears body armor, while Superman is wearing tights, Kid Flash and Artemis has sportswear, and everything is just extremely functional. And finally, number three, it has intensely intricate and patient plotting, where a throwaway line from an early episode can be paid off 20 episodes later. He had a key phrase broken arrow that could shut me down. The fights are also brutal, clever and imaginative, and the editing is slick and sneaky, because this is all a Greg Wiseman production. So much like Spectacular Spider-Man, it's a universe built with a very clear, research-focused attitude, where everything is about using the material, and it's about arranging it to its true potential. I nominate Icon for League Membership. Because you suspect Icon might be Kryptonian like you did with Captain Marvel? Young Justice is about sidekicks. They're treating us like kids, like sidekicks. Since when is being a sidekick a bad thing? You sidekicks were my inspiration. Being used for covert operations, while there's also a mystery mole in the team. It's a real slow burn that's more akin to a spy show than an actual superhero action one. So often spectacle is second to drama, where planning scenes are as engaging as their execution. But under it all is a deep attentive, sympathetic, and clinical analysis of ultimately child soldiers who are carrying burdens beyond their age and is compounded by all of their varying self-image issues. I was the general, but behaved like a soldier and sacrificed myself. Go! I am not fit for command and must resign as team leader. Who do you recommend to take your place? Artemis is too raw and untrusting. Kid Flash too rash and impulsive. Miss Martian remains too eager to please. Superboy carries too much anger. Making Robin the logical choice. But he is so young. Calder, you're all young. I cannot shift this burden to him. Not yet. If you talk to anyone about the show, one of the scenes that will probably always be referenced is the therapy scene from episode 17, Disordered, where after everyone is forced to go through a no-win simulation to experience death and failure, everyone displays their existential crisis out in the open finally. Dick Grayson's ideal self was Batman, but he discovers he doesn't quite have the cold drive to dehumanize himself or others for his obsession with success. Just Aqualad. Just Aqualad. Artemis is gone, but our mission still holds purpose, to destroy this mothership. But that thing inside of him, the thing that, that, that drives him to sacrifice everything for the sake of his mission, that's not me. Which puts him on a path to become a different man, which is ironically what Batman wanted. So he could turn out like you? So that he wouldn't. Similarly, Artemis wants to actively avoid the destiny of her parents, a supercriminal father, an ex-con mother, and a supercriminal sister. And that fear leads her to hide with an insecurity that eats away at her. But you still keep secrets from them. You won't tell them! You can't! In contrast, Wally West has the perfect family, from uncle to his grandparent figures, but despite being the most well-adjusted, he actively avoids the truth, and as a result... Wally, you're in denial. I'm comfortable with that can become irresponsible. You'll need to pick up the donor heart in Boston and run it 3,000 miles across country. No, 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 no! And be blinded by what's right in front of him. Oppositionally, Miss Martian consciously doesn't want to lose what's in front of her, the acceptance of her friends, because she's a white Martian, which is part of a marginalized race back on Mars. So she fears the same prejudice and uses her humanoid appearance as a mask. No! Oh, you meant Caucasian. But as a result, there's a hole, a pit of despair that overpowers her. Again, did we truly seem so shallow? 
I couldn't take a chance. Likewise, Cowder, who appearance-wise has the least insecurities, but his issue is that he's invested so much of himself into his duties that there's very little left underneath him. The girl I love chose my best friend Garth over me, while my best friend on the surface world aims an arrow at my chest. Something which we see in its totality in the next season. Everyone has diverse experiences and desires, but they all have insecurities with who they are and an uncertain feeling of if they can ever be truly accepted. And it's all due to an ideal identity that seems unattainable, which is often patterned after their adult counterparts. The final main cast member, Connor Kent, most explicitly exemplifies this. He's a teenage clone of Superman who actively rejects his appearance as a superhero and pretends he doesn't want to be accepted by his counterparts, largely as a defense mechanism. But deep down inside, he wants to be Superman, to experience life like him. So when everyone died, he felt actually at peace. He felt happiness, and that brings guilt and shame. Everyone I care about dead or traumatized, and I'm happy. How do I get past the guilt of that? How do I live with myself? He's a copy that's unconsciously desperate to find kinship with his original. As Gustav and Leach argued, self-image is inherently social. It is also possible that concern for self-image can dovetail with concern for social image in felt shame. Indeed, individuals are likely to be aware that Improving their self-image and their social relations is also likely to improve their social image. It has long been recognized that others can interpret one's expression of shame as a signal that one wishes to improve one's social image and one's social relations, in addition to improving one's self-image. As such, the feeling of shame is an illustrative example of the way in which the self and the social are bound together in a dynamic whole. That was an awfully repetitive quote, but the point is, the way we look at ourselves are never truly independent from the world. As much as we can be defensive or find peace in protecting ourselves by pushing others away or hiding parts of ourselves, our self-image, our self-perception is unavoidably and largely authored by the perspectives of others. And the shame we feel in ourselves comes from the standards we envision others are measuring us with. The villains of Young Justice, The Light, directly uses this to exploit our heroes by sowing distrust and sowing self-doubt to make them all exploitable. From Superboy discovering half his DNAs from Lex Luthor to them using their various individual personal secrets to pull them along like puppets. And I really can't stress how masterfully the show is constructed, the way the individual drama is intricately and invisibly woven into the plotting. So literally nothing is ever filler because every character's personal thoughts contributes to the overall mosaic of conspiratorial drama where everyone are valid suspects to us, the audience. And the gang defeats the light with a simple act. They reveal each other everything. There's something I need to do. Something I need to tell you. Uh, listen, Superboy is not the only one suffering from bad DNA. So, uh, who's next? I am. I swear I was kidding. Without sounding too pretentious, the real villain of the season isn't the light, but the ironic self-destructiveness of everyone's defensiveness. We had intel that there was a traitor on the team. Namely, Artemis McGann or me. It is more complicated than that. There's another great quote by Gosson Leach that outlines a bunch of questions on why we get defensive when we feel shame. Is self-defensive motivation tied to the feeling of inferiority that indicates a concern for damaged self-image? Or is self-defensive motivation tied to the feeling of rejection that indicates a concern for damage to one's image in the eyes of others? As feelings of inferiority and rejection are both embedded in the common conceptualization and measurement of shame, it is unclear why such an ambiguous shame should be tied to self-defensive motivation, such as wanting to hide, run away, or cover up. What Young Justice does an expert job in is showing how we conceptualize shame, how interdependent we are with others in constructing ourselves, not just in the standards that we feel obliged to stay in, even if it means lying, but in how the fear we often form ourselves aren't actually made by others at all. At all. At all. It's getting too loud in here It's time to get out I'm reading you loud and clear though There's no need to shout And I will be all we 
However, trust and the ability to share your eyes is what the next season directly tears down. So of course, to be continued. Justice video I've been working on for absolutely ages, possibly even years, but here it is. I had planned to do all four seasons in one big video, but I ended up not being caught up with Phantoms yet, so I thought I'd do each season individually since it would give me more time to sink my teeth into the individual arcs more carefully. By the way, I'm going to talk about Red Arrow and Invasion. I also kind of want to do individual character essays for Superboy and Wally, but we'll see how busy I am. Anyways, a special thanks to everyone on Patreon. Um, three videos a week, I promise, okay? Three videos. Someday, you'll get used to watching Wally eat. Norman! I brought you a jacket! Mom! Uh, from Batman. Wow! You know what I'm doing? Making a bologna sandwich, kind of like you just did.